Thank you for coming. My name's um, Lee Manning, one of the partners at Raffinger's Shirts. The event today, um, this came about from our last event we did in the summer, which was all around about zero and crunch boards, a cloud-based bookkeeping um, system that we, we explained to people the benefits of using that. So I thought it would be a nice opportunity to maybe go to, into a little bit more detail of how zero and crunch boards can help businesses from a cash flow point of view. You'll be pleased to know my presentation is only about 10 or 15 minutes long. I'm not doing a whole hour speech about cash flow and bookkeeping and accounts and all that boring stuff. So that's why I thought I'd bring some decent speakers to, to help us along. Um, I've got Ollie from um, Market Invoice who's going to talk about um, alternative finance and how you can release um, some cash from your debtor book, um, which will be really interesting. I've got Matt from Chaser who will also talk about um, how to use, they're using technology to chase your debts um, from a human point of view without it being too automated. Um, and also Yao at the last minute, which is really cool, he's come along talking about growth accelerator um, and he's just told me he's going to talk about EIS and SEIS. So he's just quickly updating his slides as we, talk, as we speak now. So that'd be quite interesting. Um, <coughs> so, well, I thought I'd start off is talking about cash flow. Um, today, in today's financial climate, it is more important than ever to manage your cash flow, manage the money that's in your business and making sure that you basically don't run out of cash. You need a solid financial base um, to keep your business going and to make sure your business is growing. Um, we've got some stats from the official, um, the Office for National Statistics that one in three businesses actually fail within the first three years. And the main reason for those failures is that it's just not having proper financial management information on a regular basis. Um, and it's just proven, you speak to a lot of people, a lot of coaches, cash is always the, th the things that they're talking about rather than profit. And I'll explain the importance of cash in the business as we go through. So, improving your cash flow. The most important thing is your systems and bookkeeping and accounting within your business. People get, they get the idea and they're using maybe desktop, and I think they're beyond now using Excel, and they're getting the, the idea that they should be using a software package to manage their finances. But with the ev event of cloud-based bookkeeping software that's out, out there now, it's more important now than ever to keep an eye on your cash flow. So I get asked quite a lot, what should we measure in our business? What information should we measure from a cash flow point of view? Very simple, and this is just a given. Guys, you should know all this stuff, but you should have an age receivables list. You should have a list of the debtors in your business. You should know instantly who owes you what, when they owe you, and when those amounts are due to be collected. Zero gives you that op opportunity, gives you the ability to drill down and find that information out um, real time. Also, another important um, ratio, important formula that you need to take into account are debtor days. So some people that don't look at debtor days on a regular basis. And this graph comes from crunch boards, which is a nice add-on to zero. But it, what it does, it shows the number of days that clients or customers are paying you, how quickly they're paying you. And the idea is that you, you look on a trend basis. So you should see that the business you should be paying, if your credit terms are 30 days, are there any peaks within the last 12 months where your credit control is not working or take people aren't paying you on time. So it's, that's a really vital bit of information. You can tell from that graph that they've obviously got a peak in, in March and obviously the credit control wasn't working or there's customers not paying them on time. And you can see that obviously then the business director either is running out of cash and he can't pay his suppliers, the credit control kicks in. So you can see then it coming down and then it starts going up again. So the idea is that you should see a constant flow or a constant line going across and hopefully those debtor days coming down. And this information, in the old days on Excel or manual books, it was very difficult to get this information on a constant ongoing basis. But now you can get that information literally the next day, the same day, using cloud-based um, bookkeeping software. The importance of cloud, you can access it anytime and on any device. Now you can do it on your phone, your iPads, anywhere in the world. You don't have to then call in the office and speak to the credit controller and find out if this person's paid. You can then see everything on your, on your devices. Um, and because it's real time, you can chase up your debtors much quicker now rather than waiting 
for the VAT quarter to end and you're getting the list of debtors from your management accounts and then you start chasing, which is far too late. So now everything's happening so much faster. Also, as well as collecting your debts, you've got to be aware, aware of paying your debt, you're paying your customers, uh, your suppliers as well. So you make sure that you're paying your suppliers and using the credit terms that they're giving, using um, payment discounts where given. Um, again, zero is a great op way to, to do that because on the dashboard it shows how much is awaiting payment, when anything's coming up and how much is due to be paid. Again, really powerful information if you want to, f to manage the cash flow. Also within Zero, you can now put plan dates in there so you can actually start forecasting when payments are due and obviously that will pop up as a reminder that those payments are due. Um, so again, using the software to help you manage the cash flow on a, on a more regular basis. Also, you need to establish a routine. So if you are in business, um, you can't do this when you run out of cash or you can't be doing this when the bank are calling you and there's no money to pay the bills. So this has to be part of your routine when you're running a business. So it has to be up there when you're l talking about selling and you're trying to get customers or you're trying to grow the business. You need to set the time, time aside to make sure that you're talking about cash on a regular basis. And when you're doing your weekly tasks, when you're running the business, it's up there on the top. So every, I know Monday, Friday's a bad day because everyone's playing golf, but on a Monday, you should, be <laughs> you should be then making a point that every Monday morning you are, or somebody in your office is doing the credit control and making those horrible phone calls um, to make sure that cash is coming down. Never get it to slide down the list. Once it slides down the list, you'll put it off. You won't do it the next week. Within a month, has gone. You haven't chased your debts. Um, it has to be as important as marketing and selling. Um, a, a good example is that is where um, when the marketing, when the sales dry up, the marketing sometimes kicks in. It's the same thing, it's too late. You have marketing has to be going on a constant basis, the same with controlling your cash. It has to be, <coughs> even if the cash control is good, and your debt days are good, and it's all working, you still need to be doing that as part of your routine. Um, it just makes life so much easier for the business. This is obvious, but I've seen so many clients where they invoice at the end of the month, um, or I'm too busy to actually invoice and send the invoice out which is like crazy. So you need to have systems in place to send the invoices out as soon as the work's done. Again, Xero is brilliant for that because on your phone or your iPad, as you leave the job or you've done the work, you can then quickly send the invoice via email to the client and there's even now payment um, facilities on that email that they can then go and pay it and it's all done really quickly. Mm -hmm. So you've got to use the technology, even to s the extent of sending statements that I know a lot of businesses will still send paper statements because it lands on the desk, it works, they get a reminder that that amount's due, um, and again, it just speeds up the, the payment process. So sending statements is still really important when running the business and controlling the cash. Again, the last one, prompt is slow payers. So if you, have, if you know you're dealing with a customer who's predominantly a slow payer, then there's nothing wrong just giving them a call two weeks before it's due, or a week before, and say, look, and this invoice is coming due, when do we expect the payment? So it's just not hiding away from the fact that those guys are bad payers, just approach it um, and deal with it, and those guys will hopefully pay you on time. This is quite important, cash flow targets. Um, not a lot of people do this, I don't know why, but people will do their profit forecast, they'll work out their margins, they'll work out how many sales they need to do to break even, but they don't then look at the cash consequence of the business on the consequence of when's the VAT due, when's the POA due, when's the corporation tax due, hopefully if you've made a profit. The people seem to forget that all those are elements of cash that don't get shown on the profit statement or their profit forecasts. Really important to make sure those forecasts are done. And now, with again, with the event of zero, with a lot of the add-on partners, crunch boards particularly, producing the cash flow forecast is literally now at a press of a button. Um, last week they launched a facility where crunch boards will take all of last year's figures in zero and prepare your forecasts going up to the next five years, all based on the previous year's history. And you can add growth rates, you can do formulas to that, literally at a press of a button. So now, generating forecasts is so easy and so quick. Um, there's no excuse now that you haven't got the time or the cash or the finances to actually pay someone to do that. It's there now with, with the technology. Setting targets is important and reward yourself. So if you, 
if you are the person doing the chasing, well, well, give yourself a target and say, yeah, great, I've done it. It's time to hit the clubs on the Friday night or the bar because I've, I've done well and I've collected what I needed to do. And the same with anyone in the team. If there's people working there doing the same credit control, give them targets. Um, it's renowned in the recruitment sector that these guys hit when they're hitting targets. All they're interested in is the bottle of champagne. They just want that um, kudos of hitting the targets. It's the same with the credit control. You should be putting those targets in place. If it's not you doing it within the business, train somebody, an office manager, somebody who's good on the phone, can deal with people, get them, train them, send them on a course, get them to do the credit control. At least it's being done. And without a doubt, if the banks, if you do need the finance or short-term loan where customers aren't paying you for some reason or you need to finance to grow the business, if you can produce f cash flow forecasts, you can produce good figures to the bank, they will listen to you and they will take you seriously that you're meaning you mean business and you want the business to grow um, and update them regularly, um, which is also a given. This is sort of a, a, an example, very basic example that crunch boards will produce for you if, if, if you need to. Again, make payments easy for your customers, setting up direct debits and um, credit card payments, uh, online payments are so easy now. Again, the technology, loads of zero add-on partners who do this, go cardless, PayPal, loads of them are out there to make it really <coughs> easy and quick and cheap to accept payments rather than the traditional check um, method. This is quite important. I, I, I was, when I was doing a bit of research on this, th this sort of came out as quite relevant that you need to look at your payment terms. This is more important for maybe startup and s s um, growth companies that you don't need to be blinded by profit margins because there's no point having that profit when the client's not paying you or the customer's not paying you. So for a lot of startup businesses, when I advise them that I say to them, look, yeah, obviously you need to make a profit, but cash is so important. If they're predominantly a bad payer and they take three or four months and you know that they're a bad payer, it's going to cause you a problem because you're not going to be able to trade through that without the cash, especially startups. The banks aren't that helpful with startup companies um, as they used to be. So you do need to have a really good eye on your credit control within the business. So you do need to maybe make that as a priority from, from um, a startup position or if you're growing. So make sure that's uh, something to consider. I sit in quite a lot of board meetings for, for companies um, and they do love talking about their profit and their profit forecast and look how well we've done profit-wise from this month. And then I just sort of throw a spanner in the works and sort of say, right, so, so wha what's the cash position like? Oh, yeah, we're right up on the overdraft. Uh, have you paid the VAT last quarter? No, no, we're behind on the back quarter. Yeah, but you're saying how well you're doing from a profit point of view. What's going on from the cash? Customers are not paying them. The credit control ladies on maternity leave, they never bothered replacing that person to chase the debt. And I said, well, that's crazy. So now, when we talk at the, the board meetings, these are the three questions we ask before anything else, before we talk about profit, before we talk about anything else, sales, marketing, these are the three questions. How much cash do we have in the bank? <coughs> What's our debtor's position like? And what are our liabilities? So we can get a feel for what the, the cash flow position is going forward. And what is the cash flow projection of this initiative or the business? So what does the cash flow position look like in three months' time? Oh, no, we haven't done that. <laughs> you realise there's a huge cork tax bill coming. And oh, yeah, I will deal with it. So these three questions now are as important as, as looking at the profit and the sales meetings. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this. So you've got revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is reality. So important when you're running a business. Revenue, as we know, it's important to grow your customers and your sales, but... Just chasing revenue above everything else is, is just vanity. I have lots of conversations where a lot of salesmen, salespeople, then set up their own business, and all they're worried about is sales, sales, sales. And when you start talking about profit, start talking about cash, they sort of then get it. So it's just trying to get it, that mentality of looking at cash as important as, as sales. And the, obviously the cost of generating that sale is as important. The thing is with profit, it is a snapshot of your performance over a set period of time. Um, and what I think is really important is, is basically the bottom line there, is that, yeah, you can be very profitable, but if you've got wages to pay next week, you can't pay out of profit. You can only pay out of cash. So when you're either 
paying wages or you're in a service industry or you're buying goods and you need to pay for your suppliers to bring the goods in, you need the cash. So I think once people get that, it, it all sort of makes sense from a, from a cash point of view. And to finish, um, I thought I'd summarise what cash is reality. So make sure that every deal you plan to do, every new strategy, every new hire, is only ever agreed to once you know the cash implications. So that's quite important. I think that's quite a nice thing to sort of finish on to show the importance of cash within the business, how cloud-based bookkeeping zero helps you manage that. Um, Chase will show how their technology then puts another layer of um, layer on, t on top of that that helps improve the cash position. I am uh, I'm Ollie Cummings from um, Mark Invoice. Um, so just a quick um, overview of my background. Um, I've come from, I started my career in uh, Ernst & Young as an accountant. Um, and then I did about seven or eight years of corporate finance in tech M&A, um, working in that kind of field. Then I moved into the venture capital space. And when I was there, I was looking at lots of different companies, going through their life cycles, their cash cycles. And one thing I was finding was once, once you have your money in the business, there's still so much more that has to be done. You're growing the business and you've got this capital, but it's actually how you can manage your working capital as you're talking that can be so important. And this was happening around the time with the credit crunch and going most of my kind of career post accountancy has been during that period. So I've actually seen a lot of these businesses really struggling what to do with their cash. You know, having that period when um, the banks are just closing their doors and, you know, stuff, you know, that kind of market. Um, so I'm here to give a quick overview of the kind of companies that have come out of this situation, the kind of new alternative finance um, market, and that's all part of the kind of fintech revolution that's going on at the moment in London. And then I'm going to show you what market invoice is and, you know, how we can help the cash flow of companies. This was a slide I was shown about a year ago when I was at VC. And it is a really good example of what I think of what has happened to the banking industry. If you play music right now, what are you going to do? You're going to play Spotify on your phone or you're going to play um, iTunes again on your phone. That's going to be typical. Ten years ago, you would have gone to HMV, you would have bought a CD. You can see how that's changed. One of the final industries to have that kind of technical technological revolution was the banking world. Massive, massive industries, huge market, and not many companies have really looked about how to kind of compete in that market and change that market. So this slide I found very interesting because it shows one of the biggest banks you know, in the world, HSBC, it shows their home page, and then it has a whole plethora of new companies that didn't exist five, 10 years ago who can do every single service on the banks um, that the bank provides. I mean, you're talking, there is, I mean, this is, this is reasonably, you know, this is about a year old, there are many more now. And, you know, it's a, there's a big change in the market. When the bank started lending less to SMEs, the, the kind of market changed. And basically, the alternative finance and the fintech world started. Alternative finance, this is, Financing businesses without any involvement with a bank. You're using other people's money, either um, everyday people, which you consider retail money, or sophisticated investors and pension funds, you know, all kinds of different money, but not actual banking capital. And if you look, in 2012, uh, there was only 267 million. I mean, as an example, market invoice are going to trade far more invoices value of invoices than the whole of the alternative finance space in 2011, in 2015. And you know, that shows the growth of this market we're in. And in last year, it was 1.74 billion. It, it's going to be at least 5 billion 2015, and it's just on you know, a gr huge growth projection at the moment. But not actually that many people know about it. Lots of people instantly go to their bank I believe 99% of overdraft applications went straight to your bank, straight to your main bank, and 88% of loan applications, again, straight to your main bank. There are other options. So if you look at 
um, investment-based crowdfunding. So, you know, you're talking Cedars or Crowdcube. Only actually 5% of people ever used it in any way, or, um, and 33% of it, people were aware of it but didn't use it. But, you know, over 60% of people had never heard of that source of finance. And then the game with reward-based crowdfunding, that's Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Um, again, 60% of people had never heard of it. And the same with peer-to-peer uh, -peer business lending, and that's, that's Funding Circle. I mean, it's very hard to get away from Funding Circle at the moment if you're in London, but actually, not that many people have heard of it. And with peer-to-peer um, -peer lending, which is Zopa, again, <coughs> that's a bit more wide, because Zopa was the, the, the founder of the peer-to-peer -peer, um, model, and they started in 2000. And one, I believe. So they've really had, a, you know, they've had a bit of a head start on people. But that's how their market is slightly more known. What can alternative finance do to a business? This is your balance sheet. So you have um, what what I'm going to talk about later: invoice finance. So there's market invoice, you know, and we do the wonderful thing of reducing your receivables and increasing your cash. So very useful thing within a business. And also we have supply chain finance. That is where a company has now come in and gone to talk to the, the actual debtor, the person, the main company, and is dealing with all their suppliers and has set up a process where they can work with everyone in the community and they actually bring all the payment terms in. You know, so they basically help both sides. That can be extremely useful. Um, merchant finance, that is Amazon, um, Alibaba, actually seeing the flow of these companies and being able to lend against it. So iZetal are doing it now, where they can actually lend two months of the amount of payments that are going through your system, um, and they can lend the first two months of that. So that's quite an interesting way of getting money. Another one is trade finance. That's young companies like TradeShift coming in and saying, this whole market of exporting, you've got these letter of credits with banks, no one can do anything about that, no one can forward it. These companies are coming in and actually getting that, you know, act, that cash into SMEs. And then the two more, you know, the more known ones, you've got peer-to-peer -peer lending. As I said, that's kind of one, you know, funding circle and people like that. And that's where you've got everyday people um, and also non-banking sophisticated investors. And they're actually putting money into the UK SMEs. And, you know, that's not using any form of banking money again. And then you've got equity crowdfunding platforms. Again, Cedars and Crowdcube, and that's your general retail person putting small amounts of money into young growing businesses. And you know that's just not something that was available before. Market invoice. We are um, a selective invoice finance provider. This is the problem we are trying to solve. In the UK, at any one moment, there's 32 billion outstanding that is owed to SMEs by <laughs> larger businesses. I mean, that's, it's huge. It's about, uh, it's, it's in the trillions in just the emerging markets alone, the similar figure. So there are, it's the classic situation, a young business selling into a big business, the big business has all the power. You have big late payment cycles. You know, as Lou was talking about, you've got 41% SMEs say that cash is their main worry. It's a, a big concern for a young growing business. And this is, where we come in. So we've brought in a very flexible form of invoice finance. We can do a pay-as-you-go service where we swap your invoices for cash. We have done this now with 550 million worth of invoices traded. We've helped 1,300 uh, UK SMEs and we are the largest peer-to-peer -peer invoice finance platform in Europe. And also Europe is the largest market for invoice finance. And as part of that, um, the government is now funding us through the British Business Bank. They originally had five million on our platform, and they've just raised that to 10 million. So here is just a, you know, a little bit of stuff of us being in the press. We, you know, the FT is now writing about us, Sunday Times. Um, but you know, more excitingly, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but we've just started advertising on the Tube. So now you've seen that, you'll probably see it when you go on the Tube, I've noticed. This is our first, like, we first foray into offline marketing to see how that works with an online model. So how are we funding these businesses? Because we're not using banking money. We've got the British Business Bank involved. We've got pension funds, Hunt Worth individuals. We've got hedge funds, family offices, 
and we've got um, the Greater Manchester Authority who, if we're trading invoices with Manchester-based companies, um, they want to put some money into it as well. And so what do we do with that and how are we different? So only 5% of UK SMEs at the moment use invoice finance. It is a very cumbersome, or invoice factoring and invoice discounting, which is the traditional models that we looked, we've looked to change. It's a very cumbersome um, way of doing it. There's large debentures put over the business. You have to generally put a PG out on your own house. Um, and you really have to put a lot of your leisure through this service. And there's extra fees and things like that. What we've tried to do is eradicate most of those pain points. So the first is flexibility. You can put an invoice onto our platform and trade it. And we can give you 85% of that um, uh, invoice up front. And then you can never use us again. Or you could, the next month, put 15 invoices on. It's, you've got complete control over what you're wanting to put onto our platform, which is you know, very different to the traditional model. Speed, if you come to us with uh, one-year annual accounts or, and, and three-month bank statements, or if you just zero integrate, it takes moments, we can actually come back to you with a debenture-free funding line within 24 hours. So just the other day, I had a construction company come to me, and, I, and they wanted, they've got a Lloyd's facility, and they're looking at, you know, kind of like half a million style um, um, amount that they could lend, which is about 50% of the leisure, you know, we could almost double that. And we could do that within 24 hours. So you're talking we can lend up to 2 million on an individual invoice. Um, and we can do that very quickly. So, and also, it's, it's very transparent. This is another thing. When you see our fees, you have a fee calculator onto our website. You can look exactly how much you'll pay. When you've signed on as a client, that whole process is free. At the point you want to trade an invoice, that's when you need to pay a fee. But it's before you trade the invoice, we can actually calculate exactly how much you're going to pay, and you can see that all on online portal. The other thing about us is we, it's a very stress-free service. We don't need to put a debenture over your business, and we don't need to put personal guarantees on your like, personal assets. And that's extremely different to the rest of the model. That, you know, no one else in the market can offer that type of service. Who's using us? You can see from here, um, we have almost every industry, you know, losing us. There's lots of different um, ways that we can help most industries. There's a couple that we're particularly strong in. Construction, we've looked at the construction industry and we've, complete, we've looked at exactly how kind of stage payments can be funded and where the risk points are. And we've looked at a very different way to how the banks look at that. And we can now give you know, much larger funding limits to many construction or subcontractors within the construction world than many of the banks can do. And you know, so that's an industry of lots of pay points between the whole um, you know, application of state, you know, payment style. Another thing is exports. Actually, 30% of our book is out to foreign invoices. So we can judge a company in a very different way to other, to kind of bank would, and we've got our own risk model and we can work out the risks. And then you've got their media and technology. If you think very asset-like businesses, as they said, it was very much struggle with their cash flow and where they can get their money from. Banks just go to them, well, what are we going to lend on? And we understand those businesses because we're a technology company ourselves, and we can happily lend on the service that they do and the fact that it's gonna, the money's going to be paid rather than any assets in their business that we're looking to secure. Um, what do customers use us for? Um, this is one of the big things about what we're trying to do to the invoice finance world is people use us for growth. We are part of growing your business and it's a very different world, traditional invoice. People increase their stock levels, get better terms with their suppliers, offer credit to new customers, hire more staff, launch campaigns, um, enter new markets, actually pay their VAT bill is another one as well. That's when people have you know, very lumpy working capital and happens to go outside of their VAT bills. That works very well. But we are integrated with Xero, um, the, you know, and Sage and Cashflow. And what that means is when you go onto our website, you just get directed straight through to your Xero site. You put in your details, you say authorize, and we can take all the details we need to give you a funding limit um, almost immediately. And then 24 hours later, we say how much we can fund you. So it's a very easy process to use us if you're with zero. We have our own in-house risk model. 
We use 92 data points um, and our use of data and technology is unparalleled. We have like, looked at how you should verify invoices in a completely new way and we don't have any informed legacy issues that banks have. And as the fees, um, of the providers, traditional people, um, traditional invoice finance, there's you know, many different fees. You've got paperwork, you've got audit, you've got service fees. We don't actually have any form of lock-in contract whatsoever. We just have a contract of how we trade with you. And we have two fees. Upfront fee, and that's paid when we advance the invoice, and that's on the face value of the invoice, and that can be between, that's between 1% and 3%. And then that's paid when we give you the money. So say if we're going to advance you 85%, you'll get maybe 83.5%. That's the first fee you pay. Second fee is for our peer-to-peer -peer lenders, and that's the investor fee. And that's generally around 0.8% every month. Um, there's no early payment charges or anything like that. And that's paid when your debtor settles. So there's no, like, there's no change in your cash flow that's going to hinder you other than the points when we're actually giving you money anyway, because you'll get that money out of the final 15%. <coughs> so they will be the only two fees. Being onboarded, becoming a new customer with us is all free. Um, it's only as you trade an invoice. Just a few couple examples of people we've worked with. Um, these are the people we're using on the tube adverts at the moment. A luxury gentleman's brand. They are small companies selling into Selfridges, Harvey Nichols, other very smart um, stores all across the world. And we're, we are advancing all those invoices for them. So that can actually mean they can get enough stock in to grow the business and go to more stores. And this is an example of what we can do with asset-like technology businesses. This company, Fishrod, they basically do exciting creations for companies. That they're just people that have crazy ideas and make crazy things for companies. You imagine a bank's going to look at that and go, well, there's, what can I do with that? There's no asset. But we, we can understand that they've created this you know, rapport with their clients and they are making you know, repeat business and we can lend to those clients. Also, if you go online, we do lots of different ebooks that you can, lots of content that you can look about, look on us. And thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Um, as you can see, my name's Ben. I'm from Chaser. Um, so what I'm going to really be talking about today is similar to Ollie um, in two parts. I think the big theme, and I, I promise I didn't see Lee's presentation before I arrived, but. I was sort of uh, very thankful there's a lot of connections there. I'm going to be talking a lot about data days because that's really what we're looking at as a business. Um, and then obviously looking at how we at Chaser are trying to reduce those uh, to increase the cash flow in your business. So that's really going to be the focus. Uh, profit does not necessarily mean cash flow. So what we mean is profit is a great thing to have in your business, but it doesn't necessarily transition into cash. So really, really important you're sort of drawing your attention to both things. I think as Lee really mentioned earlier, Every board meeting he attends now, three questions about cash. So profit doesn't necessarily equal cash flow. In the spirit of examples, um, I think the easiest way for us to really phrase this is looking at a brand new business. And again, Lee really covered that in terms of how many businesses fail in their first three years. It's a really, really big reason for it. So if I can use a business that's um, going into a new market, it's got 100,000 pounds worth of cash to invest. So they're going and they've hired a team, they've got their office space, they've got everything ready to go and they've started to trade. So the first three months of the P&L, I appreciate most p and is going to look a little bit longer than that, but a bit of a snapshot. Um, things are looking really, really good for this business. I hope everyone would agree. So from month one, we're already generating a profit. And we can see that revenue is actually growing at a pretty steady rate. And the really phenomenal thing for this business is they've managed to keep their costs at a consistent level. So at a real sort of, sort of surface level, this business looks in really, really good nick. Now what I didn't tell you about this business is A, they give their customers 60 day credit terms. So really trying to win some new business. And B, they don't have anyone in their business that's trying to collect that cash. So what we're seeing at an operational level is this business is sort of doing really, really well. So we have a look back on day one, 100,000 pounds in the bank. We can see profits growing, we can see revenues growing. Problem is we haven't actually been paid for any of that yet. So we've got 240,000 pounds that's sitting in our debtors, future cash. Problem is we've actually run out of cash. We've got salaries to pay, We've got suppliers to meet, um, and that £100,000 has actually very, very quickly turned into a deficit within our business. 
So what a lot of small to medium um, businesses don't realise, especially people that are going into this for the first time, and Lee spoke about salespeople that are sort of sort of relatively notorious to it when they start a new business, is they focus purely on revenue and they don't focus on cash coming into the business. So you can see how quickly that can become a major problem for your organisation. So look at debtors as future cash within your organisation. So I've done a lot of these presentations to Market Invoice. We're trying to solve the same problem. We're doing it in very different ways. We're looking at the cash that's sitting within your business, um, but it's sitting on your debtors. It's sitting in that sort of that future cash we like to refer to. So debtor day is broken down. Um, the number of days turnover that you've got within your business. So we can reduce your debtor days. That has a direct correlation to the amount of cash you have in your organisation. You can then invest that into hiring new staff, um, buying more equipment, marketing, whatever you need to do to help grow your business. So having a look at a more macro level and what is the problem we're actually trying to solve. So Ollie spoke about the amount of money that's owed to SMEs by large organisations. To give you sort of the next level on that at a, at a really macro level, it's actually 55 billion pounds and that's owed to SMEs in general. So that's from all organisations. So we saw 32 by large businesses, 55 in total. So that's overdue invoices that SMEs are owed in this country. It's a huge market failure and it's one that we're trying to tackle at Chaser. Um, but it's also the time. The amount of time that small to medium enterprises are spending chasing up their invoices is, is just crazy as well. So 160 million just about annual hours spent by businesses trying to chase up that cash. If you think about what you could do with that amount of time, you know, invest that in marketing, invest that in new business relationships, going out and uh, developing that new business, you could actually grow your business. Instead, you're spending that time trying to collect cash. So how we do it here at Chaser, um, it really is the opposite of rocket science. Um, incredibly, incredibly sort of simple. Um, and as Lee mentioned, it's just about consistency. You know, don't wait until you're out of cash. Don't wait until there's no money in the bank. You should have a consistent approach to your debt collection. So we call it the polite persistence that pays. So what we do at Chaser is we're a technology company. We connect with your online accounting software and we actually just do this for you. So we make sure that every single week we're communicating with your customers about your overdue invoices. Um, so Chaser is what we call an add-on application or an add-on partner. So we're like an app on the iPhone. Think of Zero like the iPhone, we're an app that connects and um, makes it do fancier things on top. So you can find us on the website. I'll speak to Lee and his team about where to find us. And what we do is we automate the chasing emails to your customers. But what I really want to stress about this is chasing your customers for money is a really, really sensitive thing. Um, I think everyone would agree that you really want to ensure that you protect those relationships that you spend a long time developing. So what your main concern, I'm sure, is as soon as I said this is automated is, a little bit worried about how that's going to look to my customer. I'd much prefer to do this personally, whether it's on the phone or just email them myself. So what we've really ensured when we've developed our product is that you can fully customise everything within our solution so it replicates what you do if you're doing this personally. So really break that down in terms of what we have as a, as a solution. So this is an example of the templates. So setting up the email templates that you can put together. So you could, within our solution, set up an individual email that looks different for different groups of customers. So if you've got customers that are family members or have been with you for a really, a really long time, you know, the linguistic style of that's going to be a little bit different to those that are your notoriously bad paying customers or your customers that, um, you know, you have a, you know, a different sort of language with on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can fully customise that and you can pull in data from zero about the invoice, so the reference number, the amount mm -hmm. owing, all that different data. Again can't stress enough about how much we want to replicate what you do if you're doing this personally. So one of the features that's really unique to Chaser above other sort of data tracking add-ons that are available with online accounting software is our multi-template. So what our multi-template does, which you'll see all the other automated tools do not, is actually amalgamate when your customer has more than one invoice outstanding. So what would be an absolute red flag for automation is your customer receiving 10 emails at 2.02 on a Tuesday afternoon, all from Ollie, saying you owe a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, very, very quick to see that that's an automated process. As soon as you identify it's automated, so much easier to ignore. You know, sort of that human to human element, we're really asking the other person to justify the unjustifiable and tell us why they haven't paid that invoice on time. But if you know that it's a, a bot that's sending you that message, you can just delete that. You can just send that to the junk mail. Unfortunately, not every single invoice is gonna be paid just by email chasing alone. We'd love it if they would, it'd be very, very simple, but a lot of us would probably be out of work, so um, there are other options out there. Um, so what we see as um, sort of the chasing funnel, if you will, is 80% of your invoices um, can be successfully chased by email alone. 
Um, you may want to escalate to other solutions outside of that. Obviously, market invoice is one that you'll absolutely want to look at to help grow your business. Um, what we see is the natural next step is telephone. So if you're not having that success on email, you might want to get on the phone and call up uh, your customer and chase that invoice. And I used to do this. I worked for a recruitment firm in WA um, years ago. And BHP, a really big mining company, um, probably why 32 um, over 55, such a big number of these big organisations, notoriously bad for paying their bills on time. So I'd be getting on the phone at 45 and 60, and it was up above 80 days in many cases, chasing up overdue invoices from BHP. And I'd speak to someone in the accounts payable department. I generally get something along the lines of, Ben, I sent you an email on Monday. The PO number was wrong. Can you amend the invoice and resend it? I'd apologise frantically because they were one of our largest clients. Put the phone down and spend the next 15 minutes digging through my inbox for that email. It wasn't there. So what we do at Chaser is, so we, um, we're automating those chasing emails that are coming out from you to your, to your customers. If your customer replies, that response lands in your inbox, just as if you'd written that original email yourself. You can have a back and forth exchange, but what we're doing is operating as a bit of a silent middleman, and we're actually storing every piece of that communication within our software against the history of the invoice. So when you do need to escalate to telephone, when you do need to go out to a third party, having that entire chasing conversation there logged on the system is so powerful. You can speak with authority on the phone or you can provide that third party with everything you need to prove what you've tried to do up until this point. So that happens all automatically. You don't need to BCC a Dropbox in or anything like that. It's a really, really powerful tool. So we've been live as a product for about 14 months now. Um, so we went live on the Zero uh, Add-on Marketplace about August, September 2014. Um, so we've been running some, some data around the results that we've um, been able to provide for our customers. It's really, really exciting. So on average, businesses before and after using us have reduced their debtor days by 26 days. So if you look at the example I used earlier, that business would actually still be solvent. They'll be able to pay their, their staff salary uh, purely by using an automated system to collect their money earlier. So if you actually look at the dollar value of that, think about the business turnover that you have within your organisation Every 100k of payment terms turnover, an extra 7% of cash within your business. So 7,000 pounds. Extrapolate that out as your turnover grows. Um, so really, really powerful. Just by having a consistent sort of automated chasing approach to your business, you have a huge amount of cash in your organisation that you can then go and spend it to grow even more. Also spoke about the time. Um, really don't want to neglect that. Um, so our experience on average, businesses particularly at the SME space, we'll spend over an 11 hours a month chasing up invoices. Um, we've, we've tried to put a dollar value on that at £175. Um, that's representative of someone earning £15 an hour administrator in your business. We're probably undervaluing that by a fair way. A, because there's an opportunity cost there of what else could that person be doing. Or B, for a lot of small businesses, it's actually the owner of the business that's doing this task. A good friend of mine who runs a, an electrician business um, Andrew will be glad to hear that he's finally using Xero after using desktop software for way too long. But he'd come home after sort of eight or nine hours on the job, he'd do his invoicing and he'd do his credit control there that evening. Um, so now having that automated approach, he's saving 11 and a half hours a month, which he can either spend at home with his family or actually go and spend on jobs and earn more <coughs> money or grow his business in different ways. So there's both the dollar impact and also the time impact, which is really key. So the way our solution works is we provide an up-to-date 90-day free trial um, so as long as you've got zero, you can connect Chaser onto it um, and automate your credit control. The guys at Raffinger Stewart can help you set it up. Um, and then at the end of that period, you decide whether you want to continue using it. And then it's a matter of a monthly sort of subscription service, um, which starts at £10 a month, depending on how many invoices you need to chase. So that's really everything from me. Thank you so much.